Hi! So I am in my tent, in my warm sleeping bag here, and it's cold outside. It's not cold inside, which is where I am now, but when I was outside, it was cold. So I needed to warm up and refresh my energy because walking in the snowy cold with my backpack was challenging. So here's our memory verse for today. Proverbs 11, 25. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Now, a couple of big words there. Let's talk through those. Generous. To be generous means to give willingly, to give a lot, to give without expecting something back. So a generous person will prosper. To prosper means that when you get something, you'll get a lot of it. This is our memory verse for the week. Proverbs 11:25. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. When you take care of other people, then you will notice that other people also take care of you. And when you give, even though you think, oh, I just, I don't have enough to give. You always have enough to give. It might not be money or clothes or food, but there's always something, your time. We're going to talk about a lot of the things that we can give and a lot of different ways to be generous when we put together our super yummy snack with our super important guest snack maker. See you there. Hello. Where would you like to go hiking? What would you like to do while you're hiking? For me, it's snacking is really important on a hike. Not everybody's the same. I think that one of my most fun hikes, although I've had so many, would have to, would have to be the one that I did this summer where I went with my oldest son and my sister and her oldest son and my dad and we went up to Algonquin Park which is in Ontario, Canada and we canoed for hours and then we got out of our canoes and we put the canoes on our backs and we walked along a part of the trail which is called portaging. We portaged with our canoes because the area where we were you couldn't keep rowing you couldn't keep rowing down that river paddling because i was in a canoe not rowing. you couldn't keep paddling down that river because the water was too shallow and the canoe wouldn't go over and there were all these rocks so you pull the canoe out of the water you pop it on your back with your backpack and everything else and you walk to the next spot in the river where you can put your canoe back in put all your equipment back in the canoe and keep going now, my sister was amazing at this because she carried her canoe and her backpack and practically ran. And the reason I really enjoyed it was because it was challenging, not, but not too challenging. I could do it. And it was so beautiful. Nature is so beautiful. I don't know what it's like where you live, but here in Ontario, Canada, we have some beautiful things. We've got uh, lots of trees and lakes and rivers and actually fun fact Canada has more fresh water lakes and rivers than all the countries of the world if you were to combine we have more in Canada than everybody else combined Canada is really big though for those of you who don't know it's the second largest country in the world so every week we are going to do a prayer. We're going to follow a special method of praying. Now, I told you the last time I did the video, you can pray any way you want, and it's absolutely true. But here's just a guideline for you. And to make it easier, we're going to use the word pact. P-A-C-T. Pact. It's, it's an acronym is when you use one word and each letter stands for something. So. The P is praise, the A is ask, the C is confess, which means telling the truth, admitting when you've done something wrong, and the T is thanks, 
thanking God for all the great generous things that he's done for you. So this week, we're going to praise God for his generosity, ask him how we can be better givers, and we are going to confess that sometimes we want more than we should have, and we have a hard time sharing, and then we're going to thank God that he is generous and teaches us to be generous with our stuff. And I have asked a member of our team to write out a prayer for me. She was a little shy. She didn't want to read it. But Diane, whom hopefully you will meet, she's written this prayer for us this week to guide us on this way of praying. God, you are a loving and kind father. and You have blessed me with so many things. I praise you for the kindness you show me through my family and friends. I ask you, Lord, to help me to love and bless others as you have loved me. I also ask you to give me a heart that cares for others like you did. I desire to be used by you to be a blessing. And I admit, Lord, that sometimes I don't share the way that I should, and I'm not generous as you would like me to be. Lord, I thank you for giving me the strength to do what pleases you. Amen. Where are some of the places that you have hiked? I'm going to show you some of my favorite camping gear. So since I'm sitting right here, I'm gonna tell you just a couple of the things that I have that I really like. First of all, I have my camping chair. Now this chair collapses down into a bag. Oh wait, I've got the bag here loud noise. There. It all collapses down into this bag. And I can fit that into my backpack. And then when I take my chair out, I can roll it up, put it in here, and it becomes a little cushion for my head, which I think is super cool. See that? Nice. And another really neat thing about my camping chair is it reclines, leans back if I want it to. And if I really want, I can bounce and it'll be like a rocking chair. So this is a really versatile chair and I really, really like it. Um, and I have, so I have this sleeping bag and I also have my winter sleeping bag because right now I'm camping in my backyard in the winter and the, my tent is covered in snow. And my winter sleeping bag goes all the way down to negative 25 degrees Celsius. And I still put another blanket in there to keep me warm. clothes, we've got pets, we've got houses and all kinds of things that everything we have really is a gift from God. And 
I want to look at a couple stories in the Bible because what we're going to talk about today is how everything that we are given from God is meant for us to bless other people, to give things to other people. So here are two stories. The first one is from the Old Testament. So this was written thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. And nobody really 100% knows when these were written, but it was a long, long time ago. But this is a story called Abraham and his nephew, Lot. It's from Genesis, which is a book in the Bible, Genesis 13. Both Abraham and his nephew, Lot, were very wealthy men. They had many flocks, herds, and tents. Both Abraham and Lot's families needed space, lots and lots of space. The Lord had told them to leave the land where they had been living, travel far away, and set up a new home. Traveling to a new land is very hard. Every few days they would pack up their tents, prepare their animals, and walk a little further toward the new land. Have you ever been on a long car ride? And you hear things like, are we there yet? Can I have a snack? These are common things that you're going to hear. Now, what if you said, are we there yet? And the answer was, not yet. It'll be about four more months. That, that's what it was like for these families. We're not even close. We've got a long way to go still. I say families, but really there were like two little villages of people. If you've ever been to a large family gathering for a holiday or an event, then you know how hard it is to try to get everybody to do the same thing at the same time. Or how about a classroom? 30 children in a classroom and they all have to work on the same activity at the same time. And they all have to work together to make things easier for their teacher. Abraham and Lot had many servants, animals, and family members who had to work together to reach their new home. They were so happy to arrive in the new land. Now they could finally stop walking. They could finally set up their homes and stay in them. Finally, they could relax. Or could they? Shortly after settling in the beautiful new land, things started to go wrong. Even though it seemed that there was plenty of space, the two families started to argue. You can't let your sheep graze on this hill. This hill is for our sheep. Make sure that you're leaving enough water for the rest of us. Stop hanging your clothes so close to my tent. Poor Abraham. Instead of being able to enjoy his new home, he spent so much of his time settling arguments between the two families. God had told him to come to this new land, but he didn't feel like they were showing very much gratitude, and he knew all the fighting wasn't making God happy. Honestly, more than anything, Abraham wanted to make God happy. He wanted to please him. So he prayed for wisdom, the ability to make good choices. And he thought really hard about how to solve this problem. Then one day, Abraham knew what he had to do. God had given them enough. The problem wasn't the land. The problem was the people. They needed boundaries. We are a family, Lot said to his nephew. Uh, Abraham said, Abraham said to his fam, his, Abraham said to his nephew, we should not be fighting. Look at all this land. Look to the left and look to the right. I will let you choose first. If you choose left, I will go right. If you choose right, I will go left. When Lot looked around at the land, the Jordan River lay to the left, and there was lots of grass and space, and not too far away, there was a beautiful city called Sodom. I'll go left, he declared. Abraham looked right. There were mountains, a few small streams. It would do. Abraham's generosity pleased God. Abraham, God said, I will bless you and your family. And he did. And the other story is from the New Testament. Now the New Testament was written only a couple thousand years ago. So it's not as old as the Old Testament. You may say, well, a couple thousand years doesn't make it new either. 
but it's all relative. It's newer than the Old Testament. This is from Matthew 19. Jesus teaches about the way to please God. Jesus announced that the kingdom of heaven was for adults and children, and then he prayed over every child in the crowd. The people were so amazed by Jesus that they just sat there, staring at him. In silence, when he was finished praying, the children went to play. Quietly, slowly, a very well-dressed man walked up to Jesus. Teacher, he said, and his voice sounded a little nervous. <clears throat> What good must I do to have eternal life? Jesus looked at him a little sadly. Why do you ask about doing good? You know what to do. Follow the commandments. Don't murder. Don't cheat on your wife. Don't steal. Don't lie. Honor your parents and love your neighbor as yourself. The man's face brightened up. It split into a wide grin. He gave a sigh of relief. Oh, I have done all those things. The man brushed the dirt from his fine clothes. He straightened his hat. Anything else? He asked casually. Only one more thing. Jesus offered the man a small smile. Sell all you have. Give to those who have less than you. Jesus gestured to the large crowd in front of him. The man looked to the people, his eyes growing wide. Panicked, his eyes darted to Jesus' face, trying to read the expression. There are so many people out there who have less than you. Take care of them. The man looked at the crowd again. He could see that the he could see there were he could see those who were shoeless and who had poorly repaired clothes. One good, serious look, and it was obvious that most of them were not well fed. People worked hard and their bodies showed it. Their faces were tired and wrinkled. He knew that most of the town was very poor. If he sold everything, he could use the money to pay for fixing all the broken roofs. He could buy a set of goats for each family. He could even buy new clothes for every child. Hundreds of people wouldn't have to worry about food. There would be no more bare feet. Not one person would starve and there would be enough money for every sick person to see the doctor. The man opened his mouth to speak and then closed it. There was nothing he could say. He had so much. It wasn't just his fine clothes. He had several large homes, lots of money, an expensive education, books, gold, silver, and anything else he could have wanted. If he sold all that he had, he could make life better for everyone in his town. But if he did that, what would he have for himself? Who would take care of him? What about all the things that he wanted to buy? It seemed that everyone's life would improve, except his own. Was the kingdom of heaven really worth having less on earth? He was just not willing to give all that up. He looked into Jesus's eyes, he didn't have to speak. It was obvious that the teacher knew what he was thinking. It was obvious that he was disappointed, but not surprised. The man's shoulders slumped forward and he slowly walked away. The crowd of people watched him go. For a moment, they had thought he would agree with Jesus. They had imagined how much better their lives would be. But the small hope that had flared within them died as quickly as it came. It is so hard for a rich person to have eternal life, he explained regrettably. It would be easier to fit a camel through the eye of a needle. So in our two stories, we have two people who are very wealthy and have a lot. We had Abraham and his nephew Lot, who had many fantastic things and large families. And Abraham was generous he decided to take the second best. He didn't need the best. He was the uncle, really. He was the head of the family. He could have chosen first and given the other half of the land to his nephew, but he didn't. He was generous with what God had given him and God blessed him. 
for all his days because of that. In Matthew, we have the story of the rich man who talks to Jesus and he, he wants to go to heaven. And he says, what do I need to do to go to heaven? And Jesus says, but you know, you know what you need to do. I've already told you all this. But actually, there's one more thing. And it wasn't that, that Jesus wants us to always give all of our stuff away. That wasn't what it was. But the things the man had were more important. They were, they were more important to him than the people. And that's when it's not okay. When what you have is more important than somebody else, their health, their life, then it's not okay. And that's what Jesus was trying to teach. If you have something in your life that's so important you can't obey God, then we call that an idol, and that's not okay. If you have an idol in your life, you need to get rid of it. And that's what Jesus was trying to tell this man. The, the man lost out on taking the path of walking with God because he wanted to hold on to all those things for himself. So which one of these stories shows us the way to walk the path with God? Lot and Abraham or the wealthy man? Mm, pretty obvious, isn't it? Why did Abraham let Lot choose the land first? And I know you can't really answer me, so I'll tell you. It was because he wanted to be generous with what God had given him. God gave to Abraham. Abraham wanted to give back. To other people. And how did God show that he really approved of the way Abraham had made that choice? Thinking, thinking, thinking. I'm sure you have the right answer. The right answer is that he blessed Abraham. Abraham actually was given more and more and more because of the choices that he made. Now what caused the rich young man to walk away from Jesus? Very sad. He walked away because he knew that in his heart, he loved his money and his stuff more than he cared about people. And he knew that God was disappointed with that. Now, how can we follow Abraham's example as we walk on God's path? Don't be greedy. Share. Share what you have. Because that's what makes God happy. God gives to us so we can give to others. He doesn't give to us so we can hold on to stuff. And when you give to others, this is something that wealthy young man didn't understand. Although he wouldn't have had all the money and all the things that he was used to, he would have actually had something else. He would have had a happiness and a joy in his heart that comes when you take care of other people. That everybody has something that they can give. So we are going to make a super yummy snack. And on this table, where none of you can see, I have secret ingredients for our snack. We are going to make trail mix. But I have a surprise because not only am, are we going to make trail mix, but I have a super secret special helper here today. And I have to tell you that the ingredients here on this table are super yummy and I haven't been snack. Hey, are you snacking on the secret ingredients? Ah! Oh! Who are you? Electa. You're Electa. Electa is our special recipe making master. And at home, when Electa is making something yummy, she often lets me help her. So I'm going to help her today. And we're going to make a trail mix. A trail mix. And Electa, do you like trail mix? Yeah. What do you like about trail mix? Well, some of them have chocolate in it. <laughs> chocolate's really yummy. Chocolate's really, yes, that's true. Is that your favorite trail mix ingredient? Mm, I don't know. You don't know? Hmm, might be something to think about. So the reason we're making trail mix is because trail mix has a lot of ingredients. I have 12 secret ingredients here. Mm -hmm. And trail mix, because it has so many ingredients, it's kind of like the things that God gives us. God gives us many, many things. Like, and like what? He gives us stuff like rides. Rides? And, yeah, and... So you don't have to walk? Yeah. Yeah, like cars. today when we came to church, it was snowing. And she said, are we walking? 
And I said, no way, we're going to take the van. We're going to have a ride. You're right. Like giving us a ride places. That is a gift. Like a car. We helped someone think of the idea of making cars so that we wouldn't have to walk in the snow and rain. Creativity is a gift. Yes, you're right. And I would love it if someone gave me a car. That would be a nice gift. Yeah, it would be really nice if someone gave you a very special car that could fly. I'd love it. I'd love it. All right, so the ingredients in trail mix are like the things that God gives us. And right. when... Another thing is clothing. Are you peeking at my list? List peeker. <laughs> when we give of the things that God gives to us, we make things better. Just like when we give all the ingredients into the trail mix, our food will be yummier. If I held back some of these ingredients, my trail mix wouldn't be as yummy. Yeah. Yeah. So, Alecta. Why don't you tell me the first ingredient you would like to put in the trail mix, and then I'll pick the second one, and we'll take turns. Um, dairy and clavin. I don't know what they're called. Oh, a secret ingredient. Could you describe it to me? Uh, the red one that looks like it has bumps. This one? Yeah. <laughs> Dried strawberries. <laughs> that one's kind of sad. All right, now I'm going to pick something that I really, really like. I am going to pick peanuts. Peanuts? Yeah. Now, if I were to label each of these ingredients as something that God has given to me, my dried strawberries, I decided, would be support. So, that means that God gives something to me, and I can give something back to somebody else, like support. If somebody is having a hard day, or they can't figure something out, or they just need someone to listen to them and say, you know what, you're a great person, then that is a gift I can give. That's a generous giving. It's not money. It's just the support. So dried strawberries would be support. And peanuts would be, what are peanuts? Peanuts are time. Time. I can give time. You can go ahead and pour that in. With some time. <laughs> Uh, like the other day, when your big brother was watching a movie that you didn't want to watch, and we had a little bit of time, Alecta asked if I'd like to do something <laughs> with her, and I said yes. So she taught me how to play some video games. And oh, that was sure. Alecta giving me her time, because she could have gone and played those all by herself. But she wanted to share her time with somebody else. All right, your turn to pick an ingredient. Okay. Pretzels. Pretzels. All right, so... Yummy! Pretzels. Are pretzels an ingredient you really like in trail mix? Well, I don't think I've ever tasted a trail mix with pretzels. Oh, really? Pretzels are not my favorite ingredient, and I don't know why. Try to just... Yeah, just... It's a good thing we're eating this, because normally we don't touch the ingredients with our hands if we're going to be sharing it with other people, right? Yeah. Yeah. We get to eat it. But we're gonna eat it, so it's a little different. All right, on my list, pretzels are honest truth in love. And that means that even when sometimes the truth might hurt someone because you're telling them that they, they have done something they shouldn't have done, that if you love them, that you will help them to learn better ways to behave. And But not if you do it in a mean way, like, that was bad, you shouldn't do that, don't touch those ingredients with your fingers. That's, that's not the truth in love, right? What would be a better way to say don't touch the ingredients with your fingers? Please don't touch those ingredients with your fingers. You might be sharing them with someone. Very nice. And that would be the truth in love. All right. Why don't you start stirring? Because some of them, like the strawberries, they need a lot of stirring. Nope. Giving to other people and being generous doesn't always mean giving stuff. But sometimes, as you can see, we've already got ingredients that are not stuff. Time, yeah. the truth, we also support. Got support. I was just oh, I beat you to support. What was the other one? Uh, it four. was truth in love. Truth in love. That's right. Yeah! <laughs> With gusto. Break those pretzels. All right, the next ingredient is my turn to pick. I think a pretzel flew up. Somebody should eat that. Mm. Here you go. Coconut. Now, coconuts are protection. A great way that you can offer someone protection 
which is a generous thing, is when you see people being bullied, what? that you can step in and you can defend them and protect them. And if a bully at school is being mean to somebody, you could either tell the teacher or tell them not to and get somebody else to tell the teacher. Very good. Absolutely. So technically both ways are telling the teacher. That's true. Telling a teacher is important because teachers are an authority and they can... <laughs> I wonder if she's doing that on purpose. No, I'm not. I know, I'm kidding. All right, so it's your turn to pick an ingredient. Here, you look at the ingredients and I'll give this a little stir here. Okay. Some of these strawberries broken up. What do you want to put in here next? Um... Money. <laughs> money? Money? Okay. So, what, are we actually going to put money in here? No. No. Just when, the one that stands for money. That's right. One of the ingredients that I have decided was going to represent money is... What? Oh, she says, try to get them to guess. All right. So, does that mean I have to give hints? Uh, no, you just wait for a couple of seconds to see if they can guess it and then they and then you say what it is all right what ingredient do you guys think i have in my trail mix that stands for money all right tell us what stands for money electa cashews cashews shoes so we're putting the shoes we're putting all our money into here you can give money and yes. that helps people that's being generous all right our next ingredient, banana chips. Banana chips are... Banana oh, you've already mentioned this one. Right. Giving somebody a ride. So, Alecta, if my friend said, hey, Alecta, I need to go to the grocery store, would you be able to give them a ride? I don't do that. Oh, but I could. So, when you get older and you have a vehicle, yeah. if somebody asked you for a ride, you think, and that's being generous, because you don't have to do it. But if you do it happily because they need it, then that's being generous. All right, what next, what ingredient do you want next? Uh, orange gummy things. Ah, close. Dried apricots. Are you gonna taste them to make sure they're good? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Mm. Pretty good? Dried apricots represent information. That's being generous too, because not everybody has the same chances to learn that you have. So if you have information and somebody needs that and you share it with them willingly, then you're being generous um, with information. It says in. Information. It has a space. Are you critiquing my handwriting? No, I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna pick, oh, this is one I, you know, the problem is I love I love almost all things in trail mix, yeah. but this one, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. So, so we already added peanuts, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Well, now what we're going you? to add honey. Oh, I'm gonna, oh, uh, honey roasted peanuts. Honey roasted peanuts. Okay, uh, and can you guess what that represents? I'm gonna give you some time. Can I guess if I know? Mm -hmm. Gifts. Exactly. You can be gener. Thank you. You can be generous by giving people gifts. Um, anything. That's an excellent, excellent thing, and it yes. makes people feel really good, right? Do you like to get to receive gifts, Alexa? Yes. Yeah. Because I don't really just like on Christmas. I don't be like, I get a gift. I'm like, okay, what's the next one? I like to have no, time no. with it. Yes, that's true. You do. You spend time in this Christmas when you got your book. Did you open any more presents for like an hour? Wait, I read no, for you an did. hour? Yeah, you read for an hour. You just, oh, a book, and you sat down and you read, and all present opening had to wait until you had read enough. Wow. Yeah. I you think read? I read the entire book. You might have. All right, the next thing is, yeah. oh, we're running low on ingredients. Wait. All right, let's do this one. Let's oh, do um, the one that represents my, joy. Yes. You say it was your turn to pick? Yeah. What did we just... Oh! She's right. It's okay, though. You know, aw, that was very generous and kind of you. It's okay that you didn't remember. Well, we'll let you have two in a row next time. All right? 
Okay. All right. So these are hazelnuts, and they represent joy. And telling someone a joke can give somebody joy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else can give people joy? Joy. Being around a happy person can make other people happy. And video games. Saying you can have video games to like make them happy. <laughs> When you have a lot of joy in your heart and you are happy, being around other people can help them to be happy too. All right, we've got three secret ingredients left and you get to pick two of them. Okay. Uh, I'll do those two. All right, so. I'm going to pour it into the cup for you. All right. Here you go. Well, thank you. <laughs> All right. I didn't so, steal an ingredient from that when I took it. I'm serious. Pumpkin seeds. Uh, pumpkin seeds. Let's see if you can guess it. <laughs> All right. Do you want to tell them what the gift of pumpkin seeds would represent? Clothing. Clothing. You can give people clothing. Oh uh, yes. All right. Now let's see if you can guess what. what Okay, pour it, pour it, and, and then they're, they're going to think they know what that is, but they're going to probably be wrong. Do you think these are chocolate chips? Yeah. But they're not! Right. They are carob chips. And what do carob chips represent in our trail mix, Alexa? Well, let's see if you can guess. Oh. Pizza. <laughs> no, I don't think that, that God gave us pizza like when we first existed he didn't say here here's some delicious pizza right it doesn't mean pizza it means love no. you are very generous with love i think so wait uh but there's one thing one thing oh what? i was about to say happy show so uh, you know you can love people by being nice and stuff yeah, you know there are a lot of people out there who don't feel like they've been loved. Our final ingredient, yeah, these are cranberries. Ooh, uh, ooh, ooh. And what I do they represent? I think they represent food. And I think you're right. Food. You I can give people this. food. All right, yeah. stir it all in there, Alexa. I can't wait to eat this. I know. <laughs> do you think that we're going to share this with... Uh, the others. The other what? Family members? Well, that's it. Of course we're going to share with our... The whole lesson is about being generous with what God's given us. Yes, yeah, so we are going to share. That's right. And that's let's say that bags. we had... What was that? We're going to... We are going to put them in those bags. Yes. And then everybody gets bags, right? I love it. Very generous. Yeah. When you give up one of those little things in your life you're being generous if you hold it to you and you don't share it like for example let's say i decided not to share the coconut the coconut no coconut that would have coconut. changed the whole taste of this trail mix. yeah no more protection right what if i had not shared something what was one of your favorites the chocolate well we did carob but normally we do chocolate and these Oh, the strawberries or the apricots? The apricots and strawberries. The apricots. Like those Let's say we had decided, no, or I had said, I bought all these strawberries and they're really good. So what if I had just eaten them before you got here, Alexa, yeah. and enjoyed them and then not put them in the trail mix? That would be mean. And that would mean no support. <laughs> That's right. And that would make us sad because I actually was able to get these things so I could share them with you and with you as a lesson. This, so, this pretzel won't crack. That's all right. All right. Oh, so finally cracked. We are going to scoop up some of this trail mix. Yes. And we're going to put it in a bag and we're going to put it on our reminder tree. What's the reminder tree? Uh, it's a tree that reminds us. <laughs> That's exactly right. Because our I got the, it because it's called the reminder tree. You're, you're right. That's very logical. I like it. The reminder, Wait, where is the reminder? It's tree? over there. Oh. So every week we're going to be putting something on our reminder tree to remind, remind us. Exactly, to remind us what we have learned. So this week we're going to put a bag of our trail mix 
to remind us maybe that spot yeah. oh we can't see it in the video though if you need it there okay maybe a little lower a bit lower okay here yeah all right, now, Alexa, why did we make trail mix and hang it on our migratory tree? Because we want to remember it. And trail mix. Sharing can make it better and yummier for all. Well, kids, that is nearing the end of our lesson this week. I just wanted to remind you about our memory verse. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Another way to think about that is, God gives me things so I can be generous with other people. A really fun activity to do that I'd like you guys to do is to get a piece of paper and write the word God on a piece of paper. And inside the letters of the word God, I want you to write some of the things that you're thankful for. Some of the ways that God has been generous in your life. So I have written things like, I have four children and that was very generous of God to let me have all four of those children. I have a fantastic husband. I have a home. I have, I live in Canada where we have a healthcare system that benefits me. And you can do this two ways. You could write the words down, or you can see there in the letter D, I've drawn some pictures. So you could do pictures instead. One of my pictures is my sisters. I come from a family where there were four girls. So I have three sisters, and I am grateful for each of my sisters because they are a blessing to me. And that was very generous of God to give me three wonderful sisters. So, draw pictures or write words, but if you'd like to, you can send me your finished artwork so I can see it at destinykids at rlcsimco.com. All right, have a great week. Try to find some opportunities to be generous. Bye.